So once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, 7x7 Ages is the, is the game we're playing, and we're going to have to start off with an admission of neglect. Um, I ended the, the last turn before I did um, Giraffe's discard Empire. She discarded the Sudanese. The Sudanese are gone. They were here in Kenya and in Uganda there. Um, but she had the special the phoenix card here so she was able to st immediately start another empire and that empire was the free state. Now the free state is one of those empires that you can just kind of start anywhere. Uh, there's some rules to where you can start it but it's not geographically specific. So she went with um, went with uh, a space and you can you can pick a space that, that someone else has. She went with a space that the Portuguese had in the New World uh, was able to convert for free this night and then put some some armies there. That's going to be good for her for a couple of reasons. One, uh, the Free State scores on wheat. They don't score on much else, I don't think, unless they have a majority of the world. Wheat and world, that's all they got. Um, so that's good for her. And also, it, it'll allow her to compete more with Flush. If we look, Flush is cruising along on the point track, and she's going to want to beat him back if at all possible. All right, we just finished trade in progress, and I thought this would be a good time to talk about the whole progress field and how that's going. As always, the Phoenicians are ahead. Um, the Portuguese just caught up, though, because they got traded with by the Germans, and they won that trade, which is kind of good for me, because one problem with the Portuguese being the ones ahead is Cowboy doesn't want to advance right now. Cowboy does not want this marker or any marker to get to here because he is behind in points. Um, so now we're seeing a, a bigger field kind of coming up which is good that should move the game along uh, if, the, if the leader isn't moving because they don't want to score points the game isn't moving towards a conclusion. Okay, going along another quick turn so far. We finished up Maneuver, Destiny, Civilized. We finished up everything. Um, what's the what's the interesting news? Um, some shifting, uh, some shifting around. We've got some shifting of the free states. That's going to give Giraffe those points she needs. Um, what else? Oh, one interesting thing that happened is the Papal States converted to Islam. That's pretty fun. Uh, what that does for Runt, other than uh, give her a little tickle in her belly, is it allows the Phronic Egyptians to do something else. If you recall, there was a jihad placed on, um, I forget, one of those Italian spaces. And so the Phronic Egyptians and anyone else who was um, Muslim would have to maneuver every turn or else lose three points. And so, and Runt was actually the one who put that there. Uh, just kind of a fun thing to do, I think she thought. Um, it kept, kept, it gave Melky some troubles too, which was unfortunate for him. Um, but that ended up biting her in the butt quite a bit because she spent the last few turns just maneuvering, maneuvering, maneuvering with the Phronic Egyptians, which is not something that's particularly useful to her. It was a lot of just shifting units around. So that happened. What else? Um... Oh, they also got Geronimo in the same turn. Uh, the Phronic Egyptians, they lost their Chief Joseph. So we saw uh, one Native American leader go and another one spring up. Um, another leader showed up here, Sheridan, for the Mongols. I haven't done a lot of stuff with the leaders. They haven't really come into play much um, lately. They've been trying to do adventures, which is what Chief Joseph lost. He lost to the Cossacks there over in... I'm not even going to pronounce that. Um, but yeah, I haven't. they haven't been super useful uh, in the game lately in terms of like doing sabotaging people or doing really anything other than adventuring. I think that yeah, that's just because I'm, I, I don't have a lot of time more than anything really. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they're just not that useful. Maybe there's something systematic. It seemed like they did some stuff before, but even then, even earlier in the game, I don't think they did a whole lot. So it might be just kind of an unnecessary bit. Um, still kind of fun and I would like to work them in some more. It's just, uh, there's just too many, too many parts maybe. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe they'll, they'll become useful again. That's going to do it. We've done our scoring. Got good news and bad news for Cowboy, our back runner, or our back jogger, back walker, perhaps. Um, 
he scored 13 this turn. The Ukrainians are pulling in five, which is great for him, uh, with the potential to pull in more. Just running against Runt, though, that's going to be tough. He's really got to penetrate this, this German territory in order to get more points out of them. But the English are still scoring well um, with the potential to score more. Uh, if they can, I think, take one, a couple more land, they're... They're really competing with the Portuguese in two areas. Well, no, he's competing with Flush in two areas. He's competing with the Portuguese for having the most lands outside of Europe and with the Japanese for having the most boats. The Japanese don't score on having boats, but they, they do have as many boats as Cowboy. Cowboy's English. So that's good. The bad news for him is Flush is still scoring a lot too. Um, I think Cowboy might have been the high score this turn, but I think... You know, that it's only a difference of a point. So we're seeing kind of a reverse of the situation before last elimination, um, which is kind of relative to last elimination. When we were about this far out, it was um, Cowboy uh, beating Flush pretty bad, and then Flush was starting to creep up. Um, but I don't I don't know if, if Flush will learn from Cowboy's mistakes or not. It's a different dynamic, too. You know, we don't have that, that three-way tie for last place, uh, especially since Giraffe is starting to get her points back. Uh, the Free States are giving her three points, which is a bit better. Zimbabweans actually score better now that the Sudanese aren't there. Sudanese were second place in Africa, um, and so the Zimbabweans weren't, weren't allowed that Africa point. Now, just having one space in Africa, because there's no one else there, they score a point off that. And they always have the potential to be scoring on those trades. And they're creeping up gradually, you know, Draft's been building up the yellow cards on the Zimbabweans to try and get more and more. That's in the, the upshot, though, is it's kind of been helping the Pharaonic Egyptians. They've tied enough. She doesn't have enough of an advantage over them that they've... Um, she hasn't been able to take away any cards, really. So that's, I mean, it's it's the 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 strategy hasn't really paid off yet for giraffe. We'll see if it does. I've been finding a lot of the special strategies um, in this version of the game haven't really paid off very well. We saw that the assassins didn't work well for Milky because partially because you know it's it's harder to do assassinations, and these trades are have been harder for giraffe. Um, possibly because we have this whole die system instead of just trading cards and comparing their values. Let's see what happens next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, 7x7 seven seven Ages.